views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voices, speak up, and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Well, welcome to Voices of Women on this lovely Friday afternoon. So excited that we're going to be talking to some more Women of Wisdom presenters. And I um, just want everybody to know we're coming up to our deadline of our early bird special, Monday, December 7th. You can still get a weekend pass for as low as $200 and even 165 for seniors. And I mean, that's, that is an amazing price for a conference. It's our lowest we've ever offered. And, um, of course, the price goes up after December 7th. But you can register for individual events. We're sort of a unique conference that way. And so we have specials through the end of the month, December 31st, where you can register for two half-day workshops and receive a half-day for free. Or register for a full day with our one of our featured guests and get a half-day workshop for free. So those go through December 31st. So, you know, and, and Woman of Wisdom, it's, it's a unique place to be at. It's a, it's a unique conference. It's intimate, experiential. It's you don't sit, you're listening to a talking head in the front of a, a on a stage and you're with 500 people. We, um, it's a great place to connect with other women and men. Men are included and invited into our evening events and we have evening events, um, an evening workshop on Sunday evening. The conference is February 11th through the 15th. So uh, even wherever you are, in whatever part of the country, um, take a look at coming to Seattle. We have milder winters than many of you do across the country. So it's a good time to come. So right now we're going to be, um, oh, and before I forget, you can look for all this information on our website. Is It's a new website. It's www.thewowconference.org the wow, W-O-W, conference.org. Okay. Well, today I'm excited we're going to talk to the uh, some women from the music group Luminosas. They are going to give a workshop on, um, it's called Open Your Voice, Speak Your Truth, Sing Your Heart. It's going to be Monday, February 15th at the conference. They're also going to perform Friday evening to open our inspiring Northwest Women Speakers. And Luminosas is composed of L. McSherry, Susan Dummett, and in Inez Andrade Markle. Luminosos creates sacred sound environments based on spontaneous resonance and intuitive harmonies. They focus on the power and beauty of the human voice as a means for healing and transformation. And Luminosos offers a unique combination of artistic expression, spiritual connection, and personal empowerment through inspired soundscapes vocal workshops, and individual sound healing sessions. Now, you can find them online on Facebook. Just look up Luminosa's Music, L-U-M-I-N-O-S-A, Music. Okay, well, um, welcome, Susan and Elle. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, well, tell us about your music group. You know, how did you guys meet and come together to sing? Well, it was actually very serendipitous. We all actually work in the healing professions. Um, We all are energy healing practitioners and then have our own twist on that and work with individuals in our own practices to help them um, develop their voice and become more um, powerful and potent in their individual expression. And then we all also have um, vocal music background and um, 
the universe sort of brought us together in a very interesting way, and we realized that together we could be um, a, a pretty uh, a powerful force for um, healing um, healing it, it, with individuals, but also in groups. Mm-hmm. Well, um, so tell us who's in the group and, and your background and training and all that. So the group is um, myself, Elle, and Susan and Inez. And um, my background is as a vocalist and a performer. I've studied in various musical traditions um, from Irish to Brazilian to Indonesian um, because I did some studies in ethnomusicology for a time. And and I've been a performer in, in different ways as a dancer, as a singer, And most recently with Luminosis for the last two years, we've been um, as a trio singing together. And as Susan mentioned, we all had some kind of healing um, background. So I've also got a master's in education um, as a counselor. I was working as a counselor for a time. And I also have certifications in hypnotherapy and different energy modalities and and different bodywork modalities as well. So for me, it's been that a path of um, discovering being on different journeys, healing journeys myself and exploring where the best fit was for me as a, as a person who wanted to bring the energy of healing into the world and meeting Susan and Inez um, who had such similar backgrounds in terms of some kind of combination of artistry and a commitment to helping others in their healing process, you know, meeting them, really has, um, I guess, potentized my sense of the voice as a real, the, the place for me of, of the, the place I really want to reside and, and work in as a healer. And I think um, Susan can speak for herself and her background, but Inez also has a background as a dancer, a performer. Um, she is involved in various shamanic practices in her individual work with people. Um, so, yeah, Susan, do you want to mention what your background is? Thanks, yes. Um, so I actually come from a classical music background, and I studied uh, classical voice and opera for many years. And I love that music, but it's, um, its focus often is on, on the technical aspects of voice. And I found that my emotions and, and passion really resonated um, more in a more um, fluid environment. And so in my work in healing and helping people sort of step out of side, outside of the box and open their own um, voice and own their power and their right to speak their truth, um, it sort of dovetailed with my own evolution of my voice. And um, the idea that sound can affect change in people. We know when we um, listen to a beautiful piece of music that it can uplift our mood. And in my work and also with the work of Luminosis, we are playing with the idea that sound can take people to different levels of consciousness, different levels of consciousness where healing of mind, body, spirit can occur. And I think um, that really is the premise from which we operate, that when we unite our voices, um, we can affect change in ourselves and each other. And in our performances, we create these environments for healing space, but also support other women especially, but other people in general, but other women in actualizing their own voices. Yeah, that's so important to, um, I think, for women now, and it's part of the whole, you know, impetus, I think, for women of wisdom is empowering women's voices, you know, for women to recognize the the importance of speaking up, the importance of being heard, and, and, um, and being out there as a leader. And, and we need our voices for that. So um, you kind of touched this, but what um, you have a very specific mission, um, and I'd love for you to explore that a little more. Sure. So our mission really is 
to offer sounds and songs of healing for earth and all beings. And what that's really saying is that we have, you know, we're asserting that this place of sound, being, and vibration is a legitimate pathway of spiritual development, of emotional development, and we're saying it's worthy of our time and and study and attention in some way, really. And as Susan was speaking to, we're really operating from this assumption that everything is energy. And we, you know, as healers, when we met, we were all doing our different healing modalities, yet at the same time, we were really feeling called to use our voices um, for the purposes of healing, to use the energy of our voice to explore that power and to, to legitimize that practice of vocalizing, of sounding, of speaking truth, as Susan was saying. So that's really what has informed our mission. We believed that with holding a strong intention of healing and pairing that with um, practices where we allow ourselves to dive into um, the sound, to listen fully to what's being called for in the moment, to align ourselves with um, that he- cause the cosmos, if you will, and the healing energy available to all of us in the cosmos. By, by aligning that way and making a practice to do so and, and expressing that through the voice and with sound, that we can create spaces in which healing can occur and energetic balance can be um, maintained or recovered. And um, and in our work with individuals and groups, we invite pe- others to step into that space with us and to explore their own um, voice and their own ability to bring in healing to their life with, with the voice. Yeah, it sounds wonderful, and I, I love it that you you know you're not just a music group group. You're really offering something. Well, this is Christina. You're listening to Voices of Women. We're going to come back and talk more with Liminosis, and we'll probably hear some music from them. The Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival is coming up right around the corner on October 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with free admission located at the North Seattle Community College in the Conference Center. Festivities include a silent auction, healers, educational booths, delicious food, and a variety of vendors. You won't want to miss this fun-filled event. For more information, visit womenofwisdom.org and we'll see you there. What does it mean to be healthy? For each of us, it means something a little different. Discover the art of herbal medicine, a natural way to help our bodies respond better to the modern-day stress and toxicity of our everyday lives. Using organic herbs from around the world, the skilled herbalists at Urban Wellness in Kirkland can help you choose the herbs that are right for your body. Find your herbal solutions for common health issues at urbanwellness.com. That's H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.com. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. 
Well, welcome back to Voices of Women. Uh, that you, music you just heard was from Luminosis, and and um, wow, that so sounds so angelic. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it, it reminded me of kind of being when you're in a um, an old cathedral in Europe, and it has that uh, that sound just sort of echoes and mm. grows in in that space. Yeah, that's that's so nice of you to say. And um, many of our pieces sound angelic, but sometimes they don't. And I think that's one of the things that makes us unique is that we don't go into any piece sort of planning what it will sound like. We uh, tune into the moment, tune into the people who are present at our workshop or performance or sound healing session, and tune into what is needed. Um, we talked about our music as a as a vehicle for healing and expanding consciousness, and we, um, I mean, essentially we channel what uh, is needed for that person, for that moment, um, for um, yeah, their optimal well being, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, um, where do you get your inspiration then from to do this? Well, I think in large part, you know, I'm inspired by by our mission, and it's so wonderful to be with two other of my sisters um, doing this vocal work and this healing work in the world. So I personally am very inspired by just the relationships we have with each other. We really make space for each other as women to step fully and authentically into our power, into... Um, are, are what we know to be true for ourselves. We really validate that for each other, that truth for each other. And so I'm constantly inspired by both Inez and Susan and their courage as women to, to own their artistry, to own their abilities as um, healers. And, and then just the mission that we collectively came to together uh, is very, um, motivating for me so just that just reminded me of you know the whole thing of of women supporting each other that you as a trio you know that uh, like what do we do at woman wisdom is having has circles so women can share and be witnessed and and so the support and and what you create together the three of you i imagine is even greater than what you can do by yourselves oh absolutely absolutely So that's part of uh, the magic uh, that we create is also in the configuration of the three of us and really feeling like we're reconnecting in the mystery um, with our sisters and supporting each other uh, to inspire our authentic authentic self. And uh, this is what we do in in the workshop. Uh, as well is to really bring forth uh, the authenticity and um, the spiritual pra- practice using our our sound fully and uh, really having this trust again and being able to take risks and um, support it in each other in, in that um, that experience and that experiment. So definitely in a group setting also it's it's about being witnessed and being supported and being seen fully. Yeah. Well, like you said about, you know, taking risks. I mean, that's something, you know, we have to, uh, you know, kind of buckle up and take that courage, courageous step of, of taking risk. And people have a lot of problems with their voices or singing or don't feel like they mm-hmm. can sing. And I would imagine mm-hmm. your workshop is for anyone that, you know, we all have a voice and no matter what comes out of our mouth, it's it's okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, our workshop will be helpful for people who want to sing, but it's also designed to just help uh, help people to relax and open their voice to speak their truth. We have people come in who um, leave our workshops feeling like, oh, I'm more comfortable in my singing voice. But then other people come back and report like, wow, I had a very difficult 
subject that I needed to bring up with a beloved or someone in my community. And after a workshop, it felt easier. I was able to find the words. And so this is a, a helpful, I think, a helpful thing for anybody who wants to uh, activate their voice, both uh, literally and figuratively. Yeah. yeah, and one of the things yeah. that you mentioned about your workshop and our, you know, in our um, website is um, helping people to clear their blocks to creative self-expression. So mm-hmm. how do you do that? Mm-hmm. Well, it's really inviting participants into a space of trust, like Inez was referring to, and um, giving some simple practices for people to begin opening the voice activating the voice and letting the energy, the natural energy um, come through, the natural energy of their expression to come through. So we just provide very simple exercises for people, ways to um, warm up the voice and kind of get used to it as a resonant instrument. And and then we might um, pair people together for some dyadic exercises, some simple reflective exercises with each other and the voice. And um, it's really, mostly, it's really about creating this safe and fun environment. So if there's some game playing that we can do with the voice that begins to just kind of let the energy flow and, and make it a very simple process to begin to vocalize without all of the should of it has to sound this way or that way or um, come out perfect or anything like that. It's not like we're teaching people how to sing a song or anything like that. It's really about forcing one's authentic expression from the inside out. So, um, yeah, Inez or Susan, would you have anything to add to that? Uh, yes, I, um, I just also felt um, that the vibration when we are together working uh, with the, this intention of of really um, having a sense of confidence and letting the energy go through us and voice us rather than shape the voice into, again, um, a box, right? Um, then there is a special vibrational frequency. So we raise our frequency together and we really feel like there is um, the mystery again that it's creating itself through us. And uh, it's really listening to uh, what is needed for each other, for the healing, and um, also for our surprise uh, of ourselves. So... There is always, um, uh, yeah, uh, there is always a, a part that is a surprise as a, we are creating from from new. So it's not really from uh, anything that um, was present in the past, but because we are supporting each other in that in that space, the the frequency that is raised brings a new uh, creation, which is like a weaving of this um, voices and this authentic expressions of each other, and it's like creating this uh, this weaving um, art together. So it's really powerful. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things <laughs> that you wrote about is um, being in the, a collective. So in a workshop, you know, you have a group of people, and so you have that support of the collective to break through energetic barriers. And so I think so you're talking about the vibration and all that kind of work. How does this break through? What do you look at? What are you referring to when you say energetic barriers? Well, it can mean a lot of things. I mean, I think for many people, especially women, but also men too, um, they're um, having permission to use your voice, having permission to speak your ideas and your feelings and your truth. And often we, we actually keep energetic bands of resistance um, in ourselves and in our bodies that keep us from that full authentic expression, right? Um, the other part of it is in learning how to, I guess, take up space with our voice, own our divine right to use our voice, um, we actually can create space for others 
to step into their voice and their power. Um, you know, we, I think sometimes we live in a culture where the, the loudest person or the loudest thing gets the attention. But if you do this work with conscious intention, it, you can actually um, create a vibrational field that where everybody has a voice. Everybody gets to say what they want and, and, and have that um, uh, collaborative um, collaboration and connection through um, expression. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And it, and it's so great yeah. to be a part of something like your voice is contributing to the whole and to blend all these voices together and be part of that, you know, I know it's great. And and I know, too, that the voice work that people do and that you're doing, there's group sounding, there's singing mantras, is it helps gain um, confidence with people, too. Yeah, it's um, very much a process of owning your own power and sort of the idea that you are a sovereign being. However, you can, when you own that in conjunction with others, you just create this, well, as this artistic weaving of, of sound and of, of expression that is, is even more potent. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to ask this question just because I'm, I'm curious and I think it's, um, I'd love to hear it from other people, is why Woman of Wisdom is important to you and for you to be there at the conference? Mm. Well, it's an amazing space for women to network, to learn from each other, be inspired by each other, to show up as the leaders we are. You know, I mean, when I heard the Dalai Lama say that women will change the world, you know, that resonated so fully with me. And I think Women of Wisdom is one of those events that, um, part, you know, contributes to making that a reality, uh, that women do have great impact and have great power and have things to share and contribute to this world that the world really need. So um, we're so honored to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, we're glad you're going to be there too. So as a reminder, they're going to give a workshop, open your voice, speak your truth, sing your heart. It's going to be Monday, February 15th. They're also going to perform Friday evening, February 12th. Um, So we're going to hear that great music. And Brian, I'd love for you to take us out and let's hear some of that music again. You got attitude, keys to the rescue. Adjust your attitude with Keys Clear Protein Waters. So refreshing, just a few sips of Keys will give you a whole new outlook thanks to 22 grams of the happiest protein on earth. Tongue tingling tasty without the guilt of naughty or nasty ingredients. If that doesn't put a smile on your face, maybe you need to drink too. Put a little woohoo in your attitude with Keys Protein Water. On Amazon or at Keys, K E E S, please.com. What does it mean to be healthy? For each of us, it means something a little different. Discover the art of herbal medicine, a natural way to help our bodies respond better to the modern-day stress and toxicity of our everyday lives. Using organic herbs from around the world, the skilled herbalists at Urban Wellness in Kirkland can help you choose the herbs that are right for your body. Find your herbal solutions for common health issues at urbanwellness.com. That's H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.com. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. The Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival is coming up right around the corner on October 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with free admission located at the North Seattle Community College in the Conference Center. Festivities include a silent auction, healers, educational booths, delicious food, and a variety of vendors. 
You won't want to miss this fun-filled event. For more information, visit womenofwisdom.org, and we'll see you there. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stainis, and I have now with me Donna Vasaki, who's going to also be at the conference. She is an author, speaker, and founder of Bella Spark Productions in the magazine. Um, devastated by the death of her daughter, Donna began a journey of exploration into spirituality and the expansiveness of life, both seen and unseen. Her Bella Spark Productions was born to contain these new experiences. Bella means beautiful, and spark is the divine spark in all of us. In her book, I'll Meet You at the Base of the Mountain, she candidly shares the most intimate moments of her inner and outer struggle to rebuild her life after the loss of her child. And um, you can visit her website at DonnaVisaki.com. That's V-I-S-O-C-K-Y. She's going to give a workshop Sunday evening. Now, this is open to men. Sunday evenings, um, all our evenings are open to men to um, be included in our conference. Her workshop is Live Your Dream. It's Never Too Late. And I want to, I heard the ad before we came on, and, and the, you know, you can get to the conference from our womanofwisdom.org website, but all the conference info is on the site, thewowconference.org. Okay, so Donna, let's find out who Donna is. Welcome, Donna. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. It's good to be here, and I am so excited to be in Seattle for the conference in February. I think it's going to be amazing. It is, and it always is, and it's always whatever people, you know, every year we have new presenters, and yet um, we continue in building that energy and that community. Um, you know, something about Woman of Wisdom is just the connections that people make, you know, in between workshops sometimes is the best workshop. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. And you asked about me, and, um, you know, I, I think in my little intro you talked about, um, you know, that I my daughter was died. She was killed in a car accident in 2003. And she was the catalyst for me to begin my spiritual journey. And um, it just led me into this whole new place and whole new arena. I I was the uh, executive director of the Fort Collins Symphony at the time in Colorado and um, ended up uh, leaving my day job and starting Bella Spark Productions because I wanted to learn more and explore hear from these speakers and explore all of the, this whole new spiritual arena and everything. And so I, I you know, I started a, basically a new career. And, um, you know, I give this talk, it's never too late to live your dream. But um, I was, I think, 52 or 53 when I started Bella Spark. And I always remember thinking, well, Louise Hay was 60 when she started Hay House. So I'm much younger than her. Mm-hmm. But it, um, it, you know, it led me in a whole, a whole new place. Um, you know, I started after Christy died. Um, I went to a compassionate friends meeting for parents who've lost children, and a woman came up to me afterwards and she said, "Your daughter was standing behind you all night long, and she's a beautiful girl." And she handed me her card, and it said "Angel Reader," and I didn't know anything about any of that. I, you know, it just wasn't part of my arena. But you know, you're so desperate to connect with your loved one. And, um, you know, you just, you, you want answers in that. It took me like a month to get up the courage to go see this woman, but I did. And I was able to connect with my daughter. And then, so I started reading all the how to talk to dead people books by like James Von, Von Prague and Sylvia Brown. And then I, uh, graduated to angel books, how to talk to your angels. And then conversations with God jumped off the shelf at me and it just, you know, went from there. And I was so hungry for this information. And, and then it was like, well, I want to hear these people. I want to see these people. And nobody was, came to Fort Collins at the time. We didn't get any good speakers here. So I started bringing them in. And and it's taken me down this whole new path over the last 12 years. It's been fascinating. Yeah, so you talk about, and I think what you're referring to is like, you know, it was a calling. Little did you know. Um, right. <laughs> that this would be a calling, but, um, and, and so what gave you that impetus to listen to that and the drive to go for it? 
Well, you get to the point, um, you know, I was working as at the symphony and I was, um, so that was my day job. And then I'm exploring all of this and starting to do some events on the side and that. And uh, I got to the point where it was like, what have I got to lose? You know, I've already lost my daughter. I can't, you know, if I lose my house, it's just a house. What have I got to lose, you know, because I was feeling this so strongly that this is the direction I needed to go in. And um, I just, uh, you know, I finally took the leap. Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> but um, it, um, you know, it was all perfect. It it made sense. And it felt like um, everything I'd been doing all my life over the years was training for what I was stepping into now. So um, sometimes you just have to take the leap. Mm-hmm. And do you find most people, um, I mean, there's a lot of fear in taking that leap. And and many of us, you know, will just make excuses, keep putting it off until at some point, I think we reach this level of total frustration that finally you have to do something because you can't stand it yes. any longer. But you got to, yeah. you know, you almost have to push yourself to that point of. Well, you do. And sometimes things start happening, um, you know, that sort of push you in that direction. You know, I remember Carolyn Mace was one of the speakers I brought in, and she's so funny to listen to. And she said, you know, your guides and your angels, because I believe we all have, you know, angels and guides helping us, you know, and trying to nudge us in in the right direction. And um, she said, your guides and angels have been telling you for, you know, months and months now that you need to quit your job. You need to be doing something else. You need to be doing this. And you you haven't been listening, and you haven't been listening. And well, guess what? You're losing your job today. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, things happen that really do push us in a new direction. That, um, and we have to listen to those things because after a while, it's it just gets it gets to the point where it's unbearable when you're going in the wrong direction and you're doing where you know it's time to be done with that. Not that it was wrong, but now it's time to be done with that. Mm-hmm. And and to listen to that, you know, mm-hmm. it's almost like listen not even to the voice. But to listen to your 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 body, because your body right. can tell you a lot too. You know, when your gut's kind yeah. of, you know, things get kind well, of scrunched up in there, and it does. Yeah, Alan. I remember Alan Cohen always said, you know, you, you flip a coin, and heads you're going to do this, tails you're going to do that. But it's not the side that comes up, you know, when it lands. It's how you feel about what happens. You know, and you and listen to, and like you said, listen to your body and listen to your heart when it comes up heads and you go, oh, I didn't really want to do that. I was hoping it would land the other way. <laughs> That's a message, you know. <laughs> yeah. And to listen to that, that intuitive voice. I mean, how do you, how to interpret it? And we, we tend to disregard a lot of, a lot of things out of our fears. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, well, you mentioned synchronicity and, and, you know, coincidental events, um, and 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 I assume that you felt guided along this way too. Well, and I I I did. I have no doubt that I was guided. I feel like my daughter Christy um, is my partner in this, and so I'm she's nudging me and helping me. And uh, I had one incident. This was so in my face that I couldn't ignore it. I was. It was I remember the date. It was um, December thirtieth of two thousand and eight. And I was um, had been doing a speaker series with uh, Bella Spark in Fort Collins for a couple of years, and I was expanding into Seattle. And so I was. It, this was, like I said, December 30th of 2008, and I'm um, having lunch with these two psychic women. I had just met them, and we're just kind of getting to know each other. We're talking about our businesses and how we want to grow. And I said, "Well, I've been doing, you know, the speakers in Fort Collins, and in 2009." I'm going to add another series in Seattle. And then I'm thinking in the following year, I will add a, a, another city probably somewhere in the Midwest. And and we're so we're just, you know, eating our lunch and talking away. And all of a sudden, one of the gals pipes up and she says, you know you're going to Vancouver next, don't you? You might think you're going to the Midwest, but you're going to Vancouver next. Well, I didn't even know where Vancouver was. Vancouver, B.C., I'd never even been there <laughs> And um, so I thought, okay, I'll just kind of put that in the crazy psychic pocket, you know, and see what happens. Well, the next day I wake up, it's New Year's Eve, and we're supposed to go out to dinner, and I wake up with a stomach flu. And I spend the whole day either in the bathroom or in bed, 
And uh, about middle of the afternoon, the phone rings, and there's a gal calling about the speakers that I'm bringing to Seattle. And she's this chatty Kathy, you know, and I'm just laying in bed. I've got nothing better to do, and we're talking away, and she's so excited. And she said, I can't wait to see these people. I'm coming down for every one. I said, well, where do you live? Vancouver. You know, I, I hung up the phone, and I put my hands up, and I said, okay, I guess I'm going to Vancouver next. And sure enough, this woman came to all of my shows in Seattle because we had done a whole series of five, and we got to be friends, and she became my partner in Vancouver, and so I went to Vancouver next. So, I, you know, we get messages sometimes, and I like them when they're really obvious and right in front of my face that I can't miss them, and multiple times. Yeah. Yes. Well, well yeah. and, and what we're going to want to talk about when we come back is um, because your workshop's on about finding your dreams and we'll, we'll, we want to share that information about, you know, how one finds their dreams and, uh, and what, pe- what, um, what blocks people from living their dreams when we come back after this um, break. A word of caution. If you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. The Women of Wisdom Fall Harvest Festival is coming up right around the corner on October 24th from 10.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. with free admission located at the North Seattle Community College in the Conference Center. Festivities include a silent auction, healers, educational booths, delicious food, and a variety of vendors. You won't want to miss this fun-filled event. For more information, visit womenofwisdom.org, and we'll see you there. What are vibes? We often use this word, but did you know vibes can actually be useful and help solve our everyday challenges? Embark on an exciting learning journey with Caitlin Keat, 11 time Visionary Award winner, specialist in vibrational energy, and the creator of Vibes Up. Join Caitlin as she takes you through the world of vibrational therapy and energy healing with natural solutions for a modern world. Visit vibesup.com to learn more today. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. 1230 WPLQ. Welcome back to Voices of Women. So I've been talking with Donna Visaki. And um, hey Donna, um, why don't you give your website or any information you want to, you know, give people? Well, the website is DonnaVisaki.com, and that's V-I-S as in C-M-O-C-K-Y is how you spell my name. Um, and then we also have BellaSpark.com, uh, uh, B-E-L-L-A, Spark.com, uh, lots of information. I have a magazine there. You can order my book there. Um, would love to have you check it out. Great. Yep. Yeah. So um, you're going to be doing this workshop on, on um, um, Live Your Dream. So let's talk about, you know, how does one go about finding their dream? Well, one of the things that I always ask my people, and and it it was asked of me one time, it says, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? If everything was totally aligned, you had everything you needed, and that what would be the one thing that you would do? And you have to, like, 
listen to that answer instantly and see what comes in and that and that's a clue to your dream. And um I remember when somebody asked me that question, the first thing that came into my head was I would be a motivational speaker. And um that I had you know, I've never I haven't hadn't been a motivational speaker. Like I said, I was the executive director of the symphony, I've had all these other jobs over the years. But it just came into me. It came out of my mouth. I would be a motivational speaker. So ask yourself that question and see what comes into your head. And then look back on the things over your lives that, uh, over your lifetime that really brought you joy, whether it was gardening or, you know, anything it was that really made you feel good with, from the time you were a child. Those are clues to What's your dream? Because we all have this dream that we came in with. This one unique thing. I was watching um, uh, the movie, um, no, I can't remember. Uh, um, it's a golf movie with Will Smith. And um, um, he the, he's working with this young man who was a golfer, and then he kind of lost everything in that. And uh, But he says, we all come in with our one unique swing. We come in with our one unique thing that's just our piece. And to find that, so listen and look over the over your life and see what brings you joy, what brought you happiness, so good, you know. Those are clues to what your dream is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and looking at well, what what do you what do you feel passionate about? Right. Yeah. And, and what gets well, you excited? Oh, and go back mm-hmm. to when you were a kid. What what excited you as a child? Yeah. Yeah, and I, um, you know, and I look at, at back at my life in that I was, I've always been an organizer and the one who, the community builder, the one who gets people going. But even as a child, I was the one who organized the neighborhood circus, you know, or the other little games or activities we do. I, you know, I was the one who was organizing it. It's like, okay, <laughs> this is, you know, part of who I am, you know, so... It's it's listening to those clues and, and recognizing them that helps you figure out, you know, where, if you haven't lived your dream, you know, where to go now. And some, and again, things, sometimes it's never too late. I think that's the biggest piece that maybe everything you've done now, and like I said, I look back on my life and everything I done was training for what I'm doing today. So I'm, now I'm starting to live my dream, be the motivational speaker and writer and and things that I want. But it it took this long to get to that place to actually step into that. So for us to think, well, I missed it. You know, our society thinks that, um, you know, if you're, you haven't found your dream by the age of 40 or 50 or 60, you're never going to find it. Well, that's not true. And maybe now is the perfect time. Right now, this instant is when you're actually supposed to step into and live your dream. And everything else has been training and getting you ready for that. Yeah, that's so true. And there are signposts along the way. And it's interesting. You can look back and go, oh, that's why that happened in my life. And and there's this step and that step. And, uh, you know, I used to be in clothing design and pattern making. And, and I've learned, I've met some other people who do events um, who are also pattern makers. I'm like, well, of course, because a pattern maker, I know the final product. So I'm like the big visionary, but I know the details to get there because as a pattern maker, you have to know everything that goes into a garment. And so <laughs> interesting, yes. I would never know that that would have prepped me for my job as, you know, and as you know, of coordinating events, what it takes. Right. That's perfect. I never would have looked at it that way, but how perfect that you can see that and you're right. So yeah, all these things that have led us up to where we are today Maybe it is the perfect time. We didn't miss, because I, I felt that way sometimes. Did I miss my window? You know, mm-hmm. did I screw it up? And and maybe not. Maybe now is the perfect time for what it is we're supposed to be doing next. Yes. Well, and, and also maybe you can speak to what are some of the blocks that people, you know, well, you, what you blocks people before. from living their dream? Yeah, a lot of it's fear. You know, we're afraid and we get, um, we get comfortable. We get, you know, a certain level of security. We've got a certain income and our house and, and everything. And we get very comfortable and it's kind of, we're afraid to get out of our comfort zone to, um, you know, try something new. And, uh, or we listen to the voices in our head, the ones that we've heard maybe from childhood. You're not smart enough. You're not, 
you know, good enough at this, you can't do that, you're not pretty enough, whatever it is that we heard and had built up in our head that came from teachers, that came from, you know, parents, spouses, you know, anybody, job, you know, um, we listen to those voices and we, um, and we get to the point that we're, you know, afraid to move forward. And I think, like I said, the biggest thing is what have you got to lose? You know, so what if you, it, most of us, it is just stuff. It's just stuff. And we have plenty of stuff. Yeah, so true. Lots of stuff. And I know mm-hmm. what you're, you're speaking of is I'm I'm in a, a dream team class right now. And one of the things was pay attention to the voices that we say in our head every day to write them down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, whether they're positive or negative. And, and, and I know we all get a lot of negative voices that just, you know, repeat, repeat and how that can hold us back. But to even pay attention to the positive ones and maybe, right. you it know, to. Yeah, and I was going to say, it's fascinating how we hang on to the negative, how we focus on the things that tick us off or make us angry or make us feel bad. Why, and why we do that. You know, why we don't focus on the good things, the things that make us feel good. But it's it's just part of, I, I mean, it's most people. This is where we are. We listen to the negative stuff. Yeah, and it it really um, it keeps it keeps you from living your dream because then you're you're never mm-hmm. going to believe that you can reach that goal that that mm-hmm. could be you uh, listening yeah. to the negative voice and to pay attention when people give you compliments and and um, and start pointing out what things that you're good at and and to res- to honor that to listen to that and accept it and thank you know thank people thank for you. that. You know, thank them. Yeah, and wow, instead of, you know, discard, you know, like, oh, no, I'm not. That's not me. It's other people. <laughs> exactly. That's what we do. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're so good at that. Well, and I think for women, especially, we've always kind of, um, especially, you know, women a little bit older, like my age, <laughs> and that, I, uh, you know, I think younger women are coming in with a little bit different model in that. But we learn to step back and not you know, let the men lead and, um, you know, be the mother and take care of everybody else's needs and never ask. This is one of the things. We don't ask and expect what we want. We take care of everybody else and we don't um, ask to say, well, I want, I want this, you know, and mm-hmm. instead of, well, what, what's okay for, you know, whatever's okay with you, you know, that's fine. Like, well, let's go out to dinner tonight and, Instead of saying, well, I want to, I really like Mexican food. Let's do Mexican. We say, well, whatever you want, you know, (laughs) and that applies to so many things in our life. Women, older, you know, a little bit older women, we never really learn to ask. Yes. And so that, I think that's what you're saying is important um, about this time is for women to, you know, take their power back and, and, and claim what they deserve. And, and so Mm -hmm. anyway, I'm so glad to um, talk with you today, Donna, and being on the show. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I really look forward to seeing you in February at the WOW Conference. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. So everybody can check out her workshop, Live Your Dream. It's never too late. It's going to be Sunday evening, February 14th. You can find it out on the wowconference.org website. Also, remember uh, earlier we talked to uh, Luminosa's um, a music group doing their workshop Monday morning. Open your voice, speak your truth, sing your heart. It's Monday morning. Find it all out on the thewowconference.org website. Check out the early bird specials. As I said, our weekend packages are available through Monday and um, this Monday, December 7th, and then lots of other specials um, offered through December 31st. I mean, that's things that we've never offered before. Register for two three-hour workshops and you get one for free. Um, you know, it's just, we want people here. It's a, it's a place to be. It's a, it's a community. It's a great place for women to get the support and from each other and to 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 feel witnessed and to share your stories. Stories is a very important part of Women of Wisdom. And so um, the next thing is coming up. We have our temple filled. We have our vendors for the marketplace filled. We uh, will be posting pretty soon. There's an art show. And the deadline for sending in um, applications for art is January 15th. And that will be up on our website um, sometime next week. And so we just have a really full, full out conference of art and and, um, music and and 
healers and all that besides events. So check it all out at thewildcommerce.org. So this is Christina. So glad you were on um, listening on the show today at Voices of Women. And we'll be um, back next week with more Women of Wisdom presenters. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stanis. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stanis.